Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to talk about an old topic, which is Doreen Virtue's A to Z list. Um, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail about that, so if you want to look at that list, it's still online. There's even a reply from her son about it. Uh, because it's caused quite a stir in uh, the new <laughs> new age community. I hate those kind of terms. Uh, so Dorian Virtue quickly was like angel card reader, psychic. Um, she had chakra meditations. She was into a lot of the facets of the new age and then she converted to Christianity and I was like, okay, that's cool. Like that's totally cool because I think uh, she's a good bridge to Christianity, but then she came out with this A to Z list of new age practices to avoid. And the first like several paragraphs are all about how if you're doing these practices, it's an abomination before the Lord and you're going to hell. And on this list, it includes things like yoga. Yoga is like always on those lists. Um, mindfulness, empowerment is on there. Um, it's a lot of Native American spiritual practices, dream catchers, saging. She has everything. And it, she's not just saying that those are going to attract demons, but that you will be spending an eternity in hell if you practice those. Um, so... I know it's an old topic, but I've just sort of been triggered recently uh, and I went down a bit of a rabbit hole and I just am kind of hoping uh, that this video, I can get it out of my system and move on with my life. Um, it just like, it triggered me because I, I had experiences with fundamentalist Christians. Um, I grew up Catholic and there is a rich tradition of philosophy and theology in there and I studied philosophy at a Catholic college. I've even taken philosophy courses at a, a Catholic seminary so I, I don't want this to be a black and white video where I you know diss the Catholic Church because I think it's I think it's a very specific branch of fundamentalist thinking that brings about lists like Doreen's that I think are are actually it can be quite traumatic quite damaging and can steer you away from god um so my experience is i mean mine was just sort of like my curiosity got me into trouble as a kid because i would read lives of the saints uh i was i was very young when i watched a video of fatima which is where our lady appears in portugal i want to say Shows like these apocalyptic visions to three kids and um, I still to this day can't make sense of it and some of the lives of the saints too, uh, for example Don Bosco would would psychically, uh, for lack of a better word, see a death of like one of his pupils and you know he'd be like... <laughs> He'd, he'd foretell Jimmy's death and then he'd be like, Jimmy, you got to go to confession like today for no reason, whatever, you're fine. Uh, because he saw this kid was going to die. He didn't want his soul to be eternally damned. And I just remember thinking, like, sorry, what is like a 12 year old kid doing that's going to put him in hell forever? So not having fully formed confidence, uh, I developed a lot of spiritual insecurity which flares up to this day. It's just, it's what's had a greater effect on me m more than anything in my entire life. And it's really at times been crippling because it's insidious and it really gets in your head. It's kind of like if you haven't grown up with these kind of uh, teachings that are very black and white, you follow these rules, you're saved, you do, you do these things, you're not saved. Um, it's it's hard to explain and I, th I think I just have the anxious personality type that it was a perfect storm. I would get in my head about things like, am I going to hell? And it became an all-consuming kind of obsessive way of thinking and I had suffered dreams my whole life where demons and the devil would show up and I had sleep paralysis and stuff like that so it's just I really 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 
got scared that I could never follow the right path correctly and it goes into just total superstition and I didn't have the wherewithal to develop like the core strength and um, discernment and stuff like that so what ended up happening was I was afraid of my own thoughts um, because which ones are my thoughts which ones are demonic thoughts and I know like I know it sounds so stupid to people who, who are outside of this but for me it was just it was such a real daily fear and then I didn't know how to come to terms with if I was like tempted by something that was a sin um like I you know like I I, I do think that in order to really follow your values uh you you have to be repelled by the things that are not good for you and um sometimes when you have other things going on in your psyche like insecurity a lack of self-love a, a sense of fear sometimes you can be drawn through desperation to things that are not good and they're not holy and they're not high vibration whatever words you want to call it um and then that in itself creates a fear and it's like this unending cycle of you know i want to be good in my cells and i want to be drawn to what's good and feeling guilt and shame if you stray the path at all and then this insecurity that god is going to damn you to hell forever takes away your your source of support basically because if i can't trust my intuition or i can't trust the relationship i have with god how can I navigate through this life? When a crisis comes up, how do I trust anything? What guidance, where I'm turning, how I deal with the pain? Um, and I looked at this type of God, like the kind of God Doreen Virtue is portraying. Sorry, I do yoga and I'm going to hell? Even if that's capital T truth, I want to have absolutely no part of that divinity if that's what God actually is. If God is that unreasonable and uncompassionate, I don't want him as a part of my life. So that's really where a lack of trust and an anger towards God started was because this egotistical, tyrannical, controlling, nitpicky God was what I was worried about um, and what I was paranoid about. So it it just made me wish I had never um, <laughs> explored anything. And it's hard for me because I am curious and I want to know everything and, and I love exploring thought. I have a degree in philosophy. I love exploring what other people think and um, wisdom and I mean philosophy is essentially the love of wisdom. So. How am I supposed to navigate? That's me. So am I supposed to completely shut down who I am and not navigate this because it's an abomination to God? I have, I, I, I just, it makes me sick. Um, the amount of time I've wasted in fear and insecurity. And I think that also just sort of shut down my natural confidence because I just was used to second guessing myself is is that thought corrupt why do i have that thought i'm not good enough i have to be better oh my gosh i'm going to hell for doing that this and that so it just it left me with an unease that i don't see in everybody i see other people living their life and making their choices with confidence following their guidance system with confidence not getting in their head so much not asking other people their opinions um so it just, uh, I think this sort of way of fundamentalist thinking really shatters your your security and your relationship with God and your guidance from God. Um, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand uh, what Doreen is doing and how fear based it is. I don't think is helping any. Buddy, um, I find her videos now are just, they're so uh, judgmental and shame-based and they're they are just mean. Like she's coming for so many people, like she's coming for Joel Olstein and um, 
other other Christian thinkers that I admire and have a lot of wisdom to share. And I, I can't really get my head around why you want to spend your time having these kind of gossipy, nitpicky debates about what other Christian people think and how, how Bible-based it is and what's, you know, like, I I mean, it's, I, I'm not a biblical scholar. I'm not a theologian. Like, I will admit that. Um, but I don't think that you, like, do you have to be a biblical scholar to that nitpicky level that you're picking apart what Joel Osteen says as, what like it it that to me is just this level of minutia and conversations that are kind of a waste of time i mean if their conversations is like an intellectual exercise that's fine but if it's a conversation as like this person's doing christianity wrong and they're going to hell i i have a lot of of problems with that i think like your time can be much better spent serving rather than picking apart other christian thinkers so i just uh it's very strange for me and i've definitely been in that world where people are overly focused on small details i i remember when i was at the seminary taking philosophy classes getting into debates with people about whether the um in in Catholic churches, whether it should be a resurrected Jesus or a crucified Jesus as the, the main part of the church. Uh, and a lot of people had such a problem with it being a resurrected Jesus and like, does that send the right message? And like, uh, like, should we be using this word and that word? And I'm not saying words are not important and there needs to be some discernment, but it just was, it really was a time in my life where I was overly obsessed in my thinking and overly wasting my time on these types of conversations and completely disconnected from God because I, I was in this like black and white rules based fear based shame shame judgmental based frame of mind and and I found I turned to mystical thinkers mystical Christian thinkers to get me out of that and also different wisdom from from different philosophers and spiritualities and science uh, as well meditate the science of meditation the science of um, brain plasticity and that really over the years has helped me calm down and get a better perspective and it's also it's helped me be grounded and confident in myself and i make better decisions that are more aligned with my per you know with what is light and higher vibration anyways um so yeah, I have a real problem with fundamentalist, fear-based lists like she put out. Like I, I uh, my heart just goes out to people who suffer the spiritual insecurity and anxiety if they're afraid of what she has on her list. Um, I mean empowerment, give me a break. Like you need to be empowered to do good in the world. Like you need to be your, your strongest, grounded, most confident, most empowered self I think to follow any sort of divine purpose. So even if, you know, God's will is perfectly clear, if you're a fearful shell of a human being, you're not gonna be able to follow it. So I'm just, I'm really, I, I, I just do not understand where Doreen is coming from at all. Um, I don't wanna diss her too much, but I just felt the need to speak out because it, it is such a traumatic thing to go through and um, it's really really hard when your mind is irrational and you don't know what to trust and you you don't even feel like you can turn to God because you can't trust God either it's I think she just does such a disservice if her goal is to bring people into Christianity I don't really see how she's doing that because this is like this is literally the reason a lot of people leave Christianity uh, and I don't I, 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 no words. There's no words for it. Uh, I wish I could articulate better everything that is going on in my emotional system and my brain because I just think it's so, so destructive. She's eroding the most fundamental necessary relationship with the divine that you need to get through life with. 
So I also think she addresses this in such a careless way. Uh, I mean, growing up Catholic, I learned a lot about demons and, and exorcisms and stuff like that. And there is like discernment literature out there and how you figure out what voices are what voices. And I just feel like Doreen does like a carte blanche of like, just don't do this stuff because you're going to go to hell. And that's not going to be like, not only just do I think that's incorrect, but I think if you're teaching people um, that maybe there's darker energies out there, you certainly have a duty to teach people how to discern and how to protect yourself. Um, because in any metaphysical arena, um, demons are mentioned. And, and it didn't, this is just like a side note. It annoys me that she says that the New Age d doesn't say there's demons. And if any, literally any medium I've ever known in my life, uh, most spiritual books will mention darker energies or demons. Um, and so she just, she just puts forth a lot of false information, like false Christian information, false new age information too, which bothers me and then gives no guidance. So I do think that there's a possibility that whenever you're, you're dealing with energy or metaphysics, you are opening yourself up to a realm or a dimension or whatever you want to call it that has energies that you either don't understand or they're dark or whatever, um, it's, it's a topic that I can't speak as an expert to, but I think she's giving them way too much power because growing up Catholic, for me, it was just like Colin St. Michael. He is like a trillion times more powerful and light bearing than a demon. So I just, I'm number one concerned that she so flippantly brings up demons in hell as if it's fact and it's inevitable she gives you no direction other than you have to follow these very very specific rules what if those rules don't resonate with you though how you can't like force yourself to believe in things and then she that's that's her focus too i also don't think it's healthy to be focusing so much on the darker side of spirituality all the time like even just preparing for this video I'm just I want it to be over and done with uh, because it's just like this kind of fear-based energy makes me sick and I don't think it brings much good unless you're going to talk about it in a constructive way um, she brings way too much power to demons and the devil and and these eternal consequences and very little power to things like angels that are going to protect you. She even says that demons disguise themselves as angels and uh, the way that Archangel Michael is portrayed in New Age is incorrect. It's, and I'm kind of like, Archangel Michael is Archangel Michael. Who, anybody can call on him. Like what, what do you, he's like, so a demon disguised as an angel is going to come? Like how is anybody supposed to navigate their life with these kind of ideas rolling around in your head? You're petrified, but then you can't call on your angels because they might be disguised as a demon. Like, it's just this kind of stuff that I'm like, really? Like, who who are you helping? It's so, it's so sad. And I, um, I, I just think constantly how at the end of every mass, they, they always say, you know, like you give peace and, and Christ says, my peace be with you. And, you know, there's, there's this idea of like, my yoke is light. So where does that fit in? Because I thought Christ was giving us his peace. And I just think peace and love are a much better resonance to connect to the divine than this nonsense list that she's putting out. Um, which, on to segment two, the list is really attacking any other belief system. And I think there's more than one way to connect to God. I also think you cannot believe in God at all and live live a life as such a saintly good person so I'm confused at why she's bashing so many other religious traditions Hindu traditions uh, Native American traditions people seek God in different ways people have an earnest hunger to connect to God uh, I think it's C.S. Lewis that says 
that we have a God-sized hole in our heart. And Augustine talks about, I'm, I shall not rest till I rest in thee. The hunger for God is so, so, so strong. And people are in earnest seeking practices that bring them closer and closer to the light, closer to the divine source. And Doreen doesn't allow people to have their practices and their terms. Some people feel comfortable calling God Allah, the universe. Who am, Who is anybody to say that those are like actually different things? Uh, when I say Jesus, how can I actually definitively say that that's different from when somebody says Yahweh? Do you know what I mean? And why would one be good and one be bad? So bad that you're going to hell. Um, people are earnestly trying to find God. They're using these practices to find God. And they're meaningful spiritual practices that help people get through the day. And I can't imagine that God would be so irrational and so tyrannical that he would say you're going to hell because you didn't believe a certain thing or you believed this. There's other wisdom out there. There's other ways to get get to God. And there's so many different kinds of people on this planet. Why would there only be one way to get to God and, and one true wisdom? There's, there's, there's so much out there. And it's so difficult to navigate. And yes, um, I do believe in discernment and I do believe in learning how to navigate all this, uh, but not through a fear-based, weird rules, dogmatic thing like her list um why would god care why would he care like isn't it more important to to make choices that bring more love and light and character and goodness into the world than it is to squabble about you know you're following the chakra system that's wrong um like as if there's absolutely no no wisdom and no benefit to that that's an energetic way of understanding the universe that i think it is valid and i know for myself again like i love to read other thinkers and incorporate things into my practice and i feel like i should have the space and the bandwidth to explore these things without fear of damnation uh isn't isn't there any natural, even if I'm going down the wrong road, God's going to bring me back? I remember watching A Diary of a Country Priest, uh, the film by Brisson. It's also, it's based on a book. And the girl was so hurt. She was so hurt and so angry at life and, you know, wanted to make all these self-destructive choices and told the priest, like, I'm going to, I'm just, I'm angry at God. I'm going to run away. I'm going to drink. I'm going to do every sin I can commit. And he's like, then God will just keep trying to find you and that brought me a lot of peace because uh, I, you know god understands <laughs> he understands the psyche and how so many things are psychological and we're so hurt and even in our being angry and self-destructive it's just still searching for for light and goodness yeah. it's just you're, you're psychologically broken down and sad and that's sort of what human life can be and uh, you, I just don't think this fearful nonsense helps anybody. The last thing I'm just going to talk about because um, there was one thing on that list that particularly annoyed me and she put meditation without God on that list and um, meditation is a scientifically backed practice. I don't actually, I, I mean I meditate twice a day and I've done other videos on all the benefits in my life that I've seen. I mean, I'm sure according to Doreen, she would just think that that was uh, like the devil tricking me or whatever, but it's, it's actual science. Um, I don't really put meditation necessary. It can be part of a spiritual practice if you're focusing on God, if you're, you know, focusing on your chakras, whatever there's, there are, there are spiritual meditations, but just meditation alone without God is just a brain fitness practice it puts your brain in coherence with your body so that you are not getting addicted to stress hormones it puts you back at that equilibrium where your hormones are balanced you're in the parasympathetic 
mode, your nervous system is in the parasympathetic mode where it's digesting better, it's at rest, it can perform better, it's healthier to have brain and heart or brain and body coherence. So meditation, I mean, it's science. It's really been proven over and over again how it makes the brain and the body healthier. So it's just like nonsense like that. Calling out meditation really bothers me. Overall, in conclusion, um, I think her list really, I don't know how you can be so definitive, uh, inconclusive when life is full of so much and it's so mysterious. Um, and again, I'm not a theologian. I, I wish I was. I, I am more of a philosopher. I believe in rational thought and thinking things through and discernment. And I do think that there's, there's processes around that. Um, I think there's room in life to trip up and make mistakes and that actually will bring you back to good. I know times that I've had brushes, been on the edge having brushes with darkness, it has certainly brought me the, the, the desire for goodness has been brought into me in a permanent, sustainable way. So I just don't really believe in a dualistic universe where good, you know, where there's good and evil and there's, and that's it. And you blindly follow good. <sighs> I just don't, again, I just don't think if Christianity is not resonating with somebody, I don't see how, like, Doreen's list is just absolutely nonsense. You can't make things resonate with people. Um, there's another path for them. I don't think God's going to judge them or damn them for eternity. I think God is loving and forgiving and compassionate and understands our struggles like a trillion bazillion times more than we do and can see that we are doing our best. And I think God wishes us peace. And I just, uh, I've never really, it's never sat with me that, that you get into hell on a, or get into heaven on a technicality, like you've used the correct words, uh, you've, you know, you've done things at the right time or you follow these certain rules. That seems to be absolutely missing the point of what life is about and what building a, a relationship with God is about and um, I, it doesn't make sense to me even that there would be hell where you where that's it there's eternal consequences when we're all just trying to do our best in life and it, it is extremely confusing and the last thing you need is spiritual insecurity we need to be spiritually fit and and connected and filled with love in order to, to navigate how difficult this life is. Um, we need that on a daily basis. So I don't get how her fear is serving anybody. Um, it's very, very, very strange. The last thing I kind of want to point out, I did mention how I think she gives way too much credit to demons and way too much power to them. But I also just, I, I know reading about Padre Pio, who is a, a Catholic saint, he like, fought, physically fought with the devil in his cell because he was so spiritually evolved and so close to God that the devil was like, I want to knock that down. So that's, that's a held belief in the Catholic church. So I'm kind of like, okay, how do you even tell me that yoga brings demons, but also there is this idea of like, the more you're, the closer you are to God, the more you might encounter those entities too. So Doreen doesn't mention this sort of thing at all. And again, I'm not an expert on it. It's just a, it's just a thought, a question I have in my head of if yoga attracted demons, maybe that's because you're getting closer to the divine. Did she think of that? Is that, uh, and uh, like, how can she definitively say it's hell when there's been many stories, Jesus, encountered the devil as well and was tempted by the devil so is it part of a spiritual journey to overcome to get closer to god what is it do you know what i mean um so that that's just like i'm just throwing that out there because i have those questions and um <laughs> on days that i'm feeling calm maybe i'll maybe i'll take a look at them uh so yeah um I just wish everybody peace out there. I just think this fear really shuts you off from 
from God and that makes me really really sad and I don't understand and I wish I had better answers but it, this is just me kind of commiserating with people and telling you how much this kind of fundamentalist stuff hurt me and brought trauma and made me second guess myself and put me on more of a self-destructive path and um as I get older and have more perspective and knowledge I can see how destructive that is and just wish everybody peace and and relationships with God and their their guardian angel or their spirit guide or whatever whatever and feel safe and secure and loved and don't have that shame and that judgment and that disgusting fear that is brought forth by people with what they think are good agendas that are actually such icky icky agendas anyways hopefully that wasn't too out of control and i wish you so much peace and love bye